Greetings, everybody. I got uh, two ideas for new videos. Actually, I got a lot of ideas for new videos, but I've been so busy working trying to get things going. So, I don't know. And you know how it is. Afraid to say anything for fear uh, that, uh, you know, they'll delete the channel. I want to keep the channel up as long as I can. So all I know is when they delete my channel, that's it. I'm done. Um, I've spent months loading this stuff to Brideon, a supposed freedom site, uh, mines. Let's see. Gab, uh, BitChute. And now uh, Odyssey and Rumble. And it's all about the same, really. So they talk. Oh, and uh, Go Yim, put those two words together, uh, TV channel. They're supposed to be a pro-Caucasian site. I had a channel on there with some Bible studies, and they deleted it. Yeah. So, yeah, so they're another, uh, another fraudulent bunch of garbage. You know, they claim to be uh, pro-white and all this stuff, but no, no, they're, they're, they're put up there by the enemy. The enemy wants to know who we are so that when the time comes, they can uh, collect us and, or get rid of us, dispose of us. But that's all right. You know, since 1990, I've known that I would probably have to die for the faith. And uh, all these preterb rapture believing idiots, uh, they got to be deceived of the Lord because you can't possibly read the Bible and find the preterb rapture anywhere. I and mean, it's just not in there. You know, but if you listen to the... Uh, preachers telling you about it well yeah but when you read it by yourself you it's not in there you don't see it it's just not there but uh they think they'll never have to see persecution or they'll never have to die for the faith but yeah we'll see what happens well um for the last few years i was uh would listen to uh somebody called uh, Hugo Talks. He's from the UK. Um, he was uh, always exposing some of the evil stuff going on. I used to listen. He wasn't, didn't claim to be a believer. And I knew that. But then recently, claimed to be a believer. And I thought, wow, this is great. I'm glad this guy I'd actually prayed for him to become a believer. But uh, today I got rebuked by him, if it is him. You know, nowadays they can uh, use whatever computer software programming, what they might call AI, to mimic a voice and say anything that they want it to say. I mean, they can take my voice and make me say anything in the world. I mean, you know, they could do that with anybody. And they could also use it to use your image and have it talking and saying all this stuff. But uh, I was rebuked for uh, not believing that all the scripture was fulfilled in 70 AD and that Rome is behind all this stuff. Uh, I'm like, really? Now, if you were a new believer, I could understand that. But I've been leaving comments on the channel proving all that stuff was wrong. And I noticed the comments were disappearing. I didn't know if it was YouTube and WordPress. WordPress is the um, uh, platform that he was using for his, uh, I guess you could call it a blog. 
but I didn't know if it was WordPress or actually him. I think it's him now. I really do. Um, you know, they'll tell you that Rome killed Jesus. Uh, I don't think so. So let's take a look at that. So did Rome kill Jesus? How about we go to the book of John, you know, the gospel, chapter 19 and verse 12. Now, who was Pilate? Pilate was the Roman administrator of Judea in the days of Christ. Okay? I mean, Pilate could have had Jesus killed at any point in time, God willing, uh, when Jesus was walking around preaching in Galilee and everything, or in the you know temple or in Jerusalem. You know, Jesus walked around for, what, years preaching. Did Pilate uh, bother him in any way, shape, or form? No. And I did a video on uh, Pilate's letter to the uh, Roman emperor. And some people claim it's fake, but, you know, I, I read that and I can't find any proof that it is fake. So, Pilate left Jesus alone, really, for the most part. But let's read Romans 19, 12. And it says, And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. And who's him? Jesus. But the, <coughs> but the uh, cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Of course, the uh, <coughs> uh, we're claiming that uh, Christ was claiming himself a king over and above Caesar, who was the ruler of the Roman Empire, right? Um, so did Rome kill Jesus? Well, no, not Pilate. Pilate wanted to release him. But the uh, <coughs> uh, cried out, you know, and uh, said, hey, you let this guy go. Um, we're going to accuse you of treason before Rome. And the punishment for treason was death, by the way. Um, how about John 5, 16? And therefore did the <coughs> persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Let's go to verse 18. Therefore, the <coughs> sought the more to kill him because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Wow. How about John 7, 1? After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in, you know where, because the <coughs> sought to kill him. Yeah. Uh, you, you get the idea, right? Oh, but it was Rome. Yeah, Rome killed Jesus. Uh, if you really want to know who killed Jesus, well, you can read the words of Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. So, yeah. Uh, for ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. For ye have also suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the <coughs> who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost." Ah, uh, yeah, but it was Rome, right? Yeah, Rome killed the prophets, and we're persecuting the Christians, right? When did when did God said pro send prophets to Rome? You know, and then these deceivers or deceived people will tell you um, Rome is mystery Babylon, but the Bible clearly teaches that. Uh, Mystery Babylon in the book of Revelation 
kill the prophets of God. So let's take a look at that. All right. Um, in Revelation 18.24, the Bible speaks of Babylon. Mystery. Babylon. Babylon was a mystery. Now you got to remember something. Uh, the actual city Babylon was destroyed. And this in and of itself could be an hour's two, three hour Bible study. But, you know, under Nebuchadnezzar and uh, what have you. But it was destroyed. It doesn't exist anymore. And the Lord said it would never be rebuilt. All right. Just, you don't have to take my word for it. All you got to do is go to a world map and look for Babylon in the Middle East. You are not going to find it because it doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Saddam Hussein wanted to rebuild the city, but uh, it didn't work out. So in Revelation 18, 24, and in her, Babylon, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, who are the saints? Those are those in Christ. So Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Revelation 16, 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. For thou, the Lord, for thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. How about Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman, the whore of Babylon, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When did Babylon kill Christians? Uh, they didn't because they didn't exist. Babylon was destroyed long before Christ was born in human flesh. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. See, we're talking about spiritual Babylon here. So who killed the prophets? Um... You can go to Hugo Talks and listen to Hugo and he'll tell you it was Rome or take your pick. You can listen to Jesus. Me, I'm kind of partial to Jesus myself. So, hey, what can I tell you? Jesus speaks in Luke 13 and verse 33. Jesus says, nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. A prophet cannot perish out of Jerusalem. Not Rome, not Babylon, Jerusalem. So when you hear people tell you, oh, New York City is, you know, Mystery Babylon, or um, Moscow, or, you know, whatever, um, ask them to show you where in the Bible the Lord sends prophets to New York City or Rome. You going to believe Jesus or are you going to believe these, these idiots that probably work for the devil? Now, I'm not saying Hugo works for the devil. He's would be considered a relatively new believer, but... Um, you know, it took me a couple years to figure out what was going on. Because, you know, everybody tells you, Rome, 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 Rome. And it took me a while to figure out, Rome or the Vatican does not own the media. The Vatican does not own the banks. You know, um, and even the Pope goes to the Wailing Wall. So, yeah. How about Jesus in Matthew 23, 37? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Whoa. Uh, it doesn't say Rome, Rome. You that killed the prophets, does it? No. Babylon killed the prophets? Jerusalem killed the prophets. Guess what? When I took, uh, well, when I tried to take algebra in school, I was terrible with math. But... Uh, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C too. 
So if Babylon killed the prophets and Jerusalem killed the prophets, that means Babylon has to be Jerusalem. Has to be. There's no other way around it. Seriously. Read the book of Jeremiah. God was angry with Jerusalem. Angry. I mean, P.O.'d, man. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I, Jesus, have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Let's talk about the two end time witnesses of God. Now, people, I know I've I've done all this stuff in the past, but I'm going to tie something else in. So bear with me, please. Um, I have read these verses many, many, many times, but uh, I'm going to give you a new twist and something else to think about. So, you know, all you got to do is when you're talking to family and or you know, people from church or whatever, and they're telling you, oh, it's Rome, it's Rome, it's Rome. All you got to do is copy all these things down, put them in a folder, save them for later. You know, about 15 years ago, when I was first starting to do internet, whatever you want to call it, evangelism or whatever, um, I started noticing I was mentioning the same things over and over. So I started putting all these things in a uh, notepad file and then putting them in a folder and then just all I got to do is copy and paste and all the information is there scriptural references people accuse you oh you're just pulling verses out of context well I'm posting Bible scriptures and they're just giving me their opinion with nothing so you know all right so the uh, two end time witnesses of the Lord are mentioned here. One of them will probably be Enoch, but the other is definitely going to be Elijah. You know, the two witnesses that uh, the beast kills. So, um, I mean, I could make these studies two, three, four hours if I really wanted to, but most people are, I don't know. Uh, somebody was kind of complaining that I make my studies too long you know they're like you know Bob you should do only 15 minutes at a time but the thing is you know that might work for other people but I'm trying to turn babies into soldiers and you can't really do that in 15 minutes I mean it takes you, you got to Go step by step by step and take them where you're going, you know. So, it really takes an hour sometimes just to feed people some meat, you know. By the time you define the terms and prove everything, you know, it's, you know, you got, you're well over 15 minutes. All right, so the two end time witnesses of God are mentioned here in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now, remember, God destroyed Sodom. When you read about Lot, uh, Abraham was asking the Lord, Hey, Lord, if, if there's 50 righteous people in Sodom, would you not destroy it? And he said, okay, I won't destroy it for 50. And then, you know, he, how about 40? No, I'll save it for 40. Well, how about 30? I'll save it for 30. How about 20? I'll save it for 20. Lord, forgive me. This will be the last time I ask you. How about 10? And the Lord says, I will, for, I will spare the city for 10 people. And if you're wondering where that's at, um, give me a minute. I'll look it up for you. And by the way, if anybody's interested, I've got uh, 
like I say, send me a USB drive and I'll send you all my Bible studies. You know, I even got the Bible on audio, some of it, not the whole thing. Just plug it into your USB drive in your car, if you got a modern car, and listen to it every day on the way to work. So, you learn a lot that way. I know I did. Uh, that could be found in Genesis chapter 18. You know, when, um, when there's not 10 righteous people in New York City, look out. And let me tell you something. The wicked will drive out the righteous. It's already happening. Um, there was a Baptist church that did a, I'm not sure if it was a, I think it was a radio show in San Francisco and they were condemning sodomy and what have you. And a bunch of sodomites broke into the church and started destroying it from the inside. Police are called and the police chief, I don't know, sodomite, lesbian, whatever, uh, watched them do it. You know, they're watching them destroy this church and they didn't do anything. And they just, you know, helped, stood back and, you know, watched it happen. And uh, the church was trashed. And um, I don't know what happened, but if they were smart, they left. You know, you can't reform Babylon. You can't do it. Impossible. And for what I understand, none of them got arrested for vandalism. None of them. So, yeah. What does that tell you? So, and their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom. God rained fire down upon Sodom, didn't he? Sodom and Egypt. Uh, the Lord never says anything good about Egypt either. Never. It says, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Um, let's see. Where was Lord Jesus crucified? They'll tell you Rome. No. Jesus wasn't crucified in Rome. No. He was crucified in Jerusalem which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, okay? Well, then they'll say, well, it was the Romans that crucified Jesus. No, it wasn't. Remember, Pilate wanted to release him. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, how about Matthew 23, 34? Jesus speaking, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your Catholic churches? Uh, no. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel, who killed Abel? Cain. See, there's people that believe uh, who Cain was descended from. And uh, and then there's others that don't, but yeah, I digress. But he was telling these people that they had shed the they were the they were the people that shed the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias son of Barchias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. And I think Zacharias, if, if this is the one I'm thinking of, he was the father of John the Baptist. And they didn't like him either, you know. The uh, <coughs> uh, came to uh, John at his baptism, at the, his, him doing baptisms, and he said they were a generation of vipers. Uh, that's not a very nice thing to say, John. You know. Verse 37. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And then Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Wow. I mean, come on, people. 
And if you look at Babylon, uh, in Revelation 18, it talks about the merchandise, gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, linen, purple, and silk, and scarlet, and blah, blah, blah. And they'll say, oh, well, that's the Catholic Church. Uh, well, all those things are used in temple worship, too. If you read the book of Leviticus, yeah. So, so they'll tell you Mystery Babylon is Rome. It's not. Although the ADL, if you don't know who the ADL is, look up uh, Jonathan Greenblatt. They'll tell you that uh, the Vatican supports them. The, uh, <coughs> yeah, the Vatican supports them. There were times in the past when uh, Rome would expel them. So, now, there's another thing, too. Now, I've covered all this material in the past, and I'm going to take a look at it again. Uh, Hugo Talks will tell you that um, all the things in the Bible, like in Matthew 24, which is a, well, we're going to read Matthew 24 in a minute. But they'll say that that was fulfilled in 70 A.D. when Rome destroyed Jerusalem. And they'll tell you that the Antichrist appeared in 70 A.D. when Rome sacrificed a pig on the altar of uh, the Lord in the temple. But did that really happen, or was that the abomination of desolation? Let's take a look. Let's go read Matthew 24, so we can get a reference here. All right, let's read Matthew 24. I even did a, a series on Matthew 24, uh, if you're interested. You know, look at my playlist. You know, I, I am so concerned about doing my new Bible studies, because if you say the wrong thing, your uh, video gets deleted, and then you get a at least a two-week strike, if not a month. And then they delete the video, and then sometimes they delete your channel. So, which is why I'm not doing much anymore. I mean, I've got, I have over 1,500 videos, or at least I've done that many. I don't know if I have that many on YouTube, but uh, they've deleted so many of them. But uh, seriously, I did uh, look at my playlists. I've got some very important information on the playlists. I mean, I don't do this for money. Do I have a book that I try to sell you people for $19.95? And if you order now, you'll get a prayer, piece of a prayer shawl. That was dipped in the Jordan River, blessed by Rabbi whatever. No, you don't hear that from me. So, you know. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. And that's what I try to do. I've tried to freely share what I've learned over the years. And uh, knowing that one day I'm going to have to uh, appear before Christ and give an account of everything that I've ever taught. And that is a scary thought, people. Can you? What is TBN going to do? The preachers on TBN. What are they going to do? You know, Benny Hinn and all them people. What are they going to do? It's going to be an interesting show. I hope the Lord allows me to watch and uh, gives me a big bag of nice buttered popcorn. I, you know, uh, air popped uh, is better than... Uh, oil popped if you ask me but hey what can i tell you so of course i'm i have a, if the lord read all my sins uh we'd probably be there for a couple of years but yeah all right matthew 24 we'll probably skip around and jesus went out and departed from the temple all right so jesus is leaving the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple now remember something, King Herod had uh, 
financed the building of the temple. You know, King Herod, the guy that killed the family that killed all the babies in uh, Bethlehem trying to kill Christ. Yeah, that Herod family. Uh, did he build the temple because he was trying to uh, honor God and worship the Lord? No. No, he built it to control the narrative. You know, he built a temple. Uh, it was under Roman rule. Uh, I'm sure he picked most of the priests. So, so they're showing him this magnificent temple. Verse 2, And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Oh yeah, look at all this stuff. Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Well, guess what? When the temple was burned, there was a lot of gold in the temple, and the gold melted, and it melted in between the cracks of all the stones. So when the temple burned, the Roman soldiers took the temple apart, stone by stone, brick by brick, and they scraped the gold and put it in their pockets. Yeah, absolutely. And they took all the stones and they threw them down. You know, when you're done with it, hey, you know, I checked this stone. There's no more gold on it. I scraped it all off. All right, let's get rid of it. And they throw it away. So when the <coughs> tell you that the wailing wall is part of the temple, well, guess what? They're calling Jesus a liar. And the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And since Jesus is God in the flesh, I believe him and not the wailing wall. And by the way, every politician for the last, oh, I don't know, uh, 40, maybe 50 years has gone to the wailing wall. The Pope went to the wailing wall. Uh, the Clintons went to the wailing wall. Reagan, I'm sure. Um, Trump. Yeah, you get the idea. Verse 3. And as he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Yeah, when are these, the buildings, you know, when are they going to be destroyed and the stones thrown down? What are these things going to be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Sign. What's the sign of thy coming? You know, when, when there's a fire coming, you see flames and you see red in the sky and you see smoke. That's the sign that there's a fire coming. Well, the sign of the times. Lord, what's the sign of the times and of the end of the world? And Jesus is going to tell them, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed, pay attention, take heed that no man deceive you. Oh, good advice. Don't let man deceive you. Let God be true and every man a liar. And that includes me, people. You know, don't ever follow Bob unless Bob's leading you to Jesus. If I'm not leading you to Jesus, don't follow me. Because I will let you down. I've let a lot of people down. I hope I never let Christ down. But So, take heed that many, uh, take heed that no man deceive you. The Bible says, don't put your confidence in man. I learned that in Arkansas a couple few years ago. Verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Can anybody say World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam? 
um, Afghanistan, Iraq, Ukraine, and Russia. Oh, yeah. Wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Uh, what did Joseph do in the book of... Uh, I forget. Was it Genesis or Exodus? I forget. Uh, I think it's Genesis. What did Joseph do when he was warned that there'd be famine? Oh, let's take a look real quick. Well, in Genesis chapter 41, that's right, I was wrong. Genesis 41. Um, Joseph prepared. So, Jesus warns, and there shall be famines and pestilences. People, pestilences, disease. And... Uh, you going to trust the people that have been to Epstein I land for your medical uh, information, or are you going to trust the Lord of the Lord? Hey, uh, if anybody's interested, I got a lot of medical information. So, yeah, on how to deal with that stuff so famines pestilences earthquakes in divers or many places all these are the beginning of sorrows this is just the introduction people verse 9 and then all right well that all those things were the beginning of sorrows the beginning but let's keep reading. What 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 will happen after the beginning? Verse 9. Then shall they, you know they, deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Look into the Noahide laws, people. N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Oh, where's that in the Bible, Chaplain Bob? It's not. It exists only in the minds of the... Uh, <coughs> the uh those that hate christ yeah the no hide laws do not exist in the bible nowhere i've read the bible it's not in there you know and if you don't believe me you could read genesis 6 7 8 9 read about noah and if you could find noah being given laws let me know and i'll uh change my mind and do a public apology but I won't have to because I know it's not there. So, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. They already hate the name of Jesus. That's why they use Yeshua. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended. Oh, yeah. What? You mean I got to die? Uh, you mean I'm going to be afflicted and they're going to kill me for being, for believing in Jesus? What? Oh, man, that's offensive. I was told the to pre-trib rapture, I wouldn't be here. So they're going to, you know, Jesus was a false prophet. He taught the pre-trib rapture and we're still here. So the uh, <coughs> uh, they were right that Jesus is a false prophet. You know, because he taught the pre-trib rapture and, and we shouldn't be here for this stuff. I mean, come on. Jesus warns you for this stuff, you know, and that's going to be their mindset. Because when they find out that they're going to have to die for Christ, and all you got to do is read the book of Acts. Stephen died for the faith. Eleven out of the twelve apostles died for the faith. Paul died for the faith. I mean, come on. And then many, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. Oh, yeah. Those people in the building that claims to be a church, 
They're going to betray you. Oh yeah, they're going to. And shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Turn on TBN. There you go, right there. Many false prophets. And because iniquity, you know, wickedness and sin, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Because evil was allowed to be tolerated by the church. And by the way, the church isn't a building. The church is the people. And because we tolerated wickedness, God told you what to do with the wicked, but we don't want to do that anymore because they'd rather believe the social gospel that Jesus loves everybody. You know, we, we got to tolerate the wicked because, you know, they might come to Christ one day. That's not what my Bible says, but, uh, you know, that's what Billy Goat Graham and them taught. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of Christ is going to become, their love of Christ is going to become cold. Verse 13. Jesus speaking, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I don't care if you call yourself a Christian your whole stinking life. And when you're brought to the synagogue and have your head stuck in the guillotine, and they're getting ready to pull the lever and the blade come down and chop your head off, and the rabbi comes to you and says, uh, all you have to do is deny Jesus and I'll let you live. And you think about it and says, well, you know, who's going to take care of my kids if I deny Jesus? If I don't deny Jesus and live? Okay, I deny Jesus as Lord. Okay, I will let you live. Come here. Now, Goyim, you got to keep the, the Noahide laws. Oh, thank you, Rabbi. I appreciate it. Guess what? Did you endure to the end? No. No, you didn't. Well, guess what? In Luke 12, verse 19, uh, verse 9, Luke 12, 9, Jesus told us what would happen if you deny him. But he that denieth me, me being Jesus, but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. God's going to, Jesus is going to say, he's going to deny knowing you. I never knew you. Depart from me. How many people are, they go to church, so-called, have that kind of faith that they'll die for the Lord? Read the book of Acts. What was Stephen? Stephen was killed for his faith. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. People, when you get your head cut off for Christ, you know, you close your eyes, you hear the sound of the blade, and when you open your eyes, you're with Christ. You're with Christ. And that is a guaranteed ticket to heaven. Guaranteed! Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye shall therefore see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Mm, what is this abomination of desolation? Well, we could take a look real quick. All right, if you uh, want to know about the abomination of desolation, let's take a look. Daniel chapter 8 is when this was uh, mentioned. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, he was Nebuchadnezzar's son, 
A vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, and saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Uli, Uli, Ulai, Ulai, I don't know, Ulai. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood upon a river, the river a ram which had two horns, and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, and he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, an he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. Now a horn, people, is uh, rule, represents rulership, you know, kingship, power. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I'd seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Uh, remember, uh, a he-goat. You know, the... <laughs> uh, what did Jesus say about the, uh, the sheep will be on the right hand, but the goat's on the left? Yeah. And we're going to... There's a reason why I put uh, that video in my community page about the... Um, Alexander the Great. So the, the world calls him Alexander the Great. So he's the he-goat. We're going to find that in a minute. And the goat had a notable, notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I'd seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with Kohler against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Uh, this he-goat was my opinion, Alexander the Great, he died when he was about 30. I mean, he started, from what I understand, if history is to be believed, he started to believe he was uh, a son of one of the gods and exalted himself. And then he died suddenly. And some wonder if he was poisoned or, you know, or if he just, the Lord killed him or whatever. I don't know. So the great horn was broken. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Alexander's empire stretched from Macedonia, Greece, down to Egypt, all the way to uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, to in parts of India. I mean, it was a huge empire. Uh, four notable horns came up. Alexander's four principal generals decided to divide up the kingdom between the four of them. Perhaps you've heard of the Ptolemies. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, they That was the name of the general that ruled Egypt, who was a, he was a Macedonian Greek. He was one of Alexander's generals. You ever heard of Alexandria, Egypt? Yeah, well, it was named in honor of Alexander. He conquered Egypt. So Ptolemy was not Egyptian. He was Greek. His daughter's name was Cleopatra. Perhaps you've heard of her. Yeah. So the, um, the four generals uh, took over Alexander's vast empire. And like I say, he died when he was about 30. Therefore the he-goat waxed great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. 
And out of one of them came a, forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And by the way, um, Alexander's uh, army had conquered the land of Israel, believe it or not, and ruled it for, from what I understand, a few hundred years, which is why Greek was the language of commerce back in those days. If you, could, if you knew Greek, you could go to Egypt, you could go to Israel, you could go to, you know, all those areas and do commerce. You know, it was a language of business. And that laid the foundation of why the New Testament was written in Greek. Because, let's face it, Greece, perhaps you've heard of Thessalonians, Corinthians, Galatians, uh, you know, yeah. You you think Paul was speaking Hebrew to the Greeks? No. No, he wasn't. He was speaking to them in their own language, Greek. New Testament was written in Greek. Yeah. In Matthew 21, 43, Jesus speaking, he said, Therefore say I... And he was speaking to the, uh, <coughs> um, speaking to, uh, yeah. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Which is why the New Testament was written in Greek and not Hebrew. God used Alexander the Great believe it or not, to, um, yeah, take care of all this. This is stuff you don't learn in church, so-called. You know, a building that claims to be a church, yeah, it's not. All right, so let's go to verse 9. Uh, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, Host of heaven, it's talking about the angels. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stomped upon, stamped upon them. Um, what is it talking about? Casting some of the host of angels down and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. What are we talking about here? Well, let's take a look. Well, if you're looking at stars... You know why I love the King James Bible? It interprets itself. Oh, what do stars means? Well, okay. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Stars sometimes are lights in the sky and sometimes they're angels. So, hold on a minute. In Job chapter 38 verse 7, it says, When the morning stars sang together, um, how do stars up in the sky sing? They don't. It's a figure of speech for the, for the angels. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Sons of God. Another name for the angels, right? So, yeah. All right, let's go to Revelation 12 real quick. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. And oh, by the way, I did a commentary on Revelation 12. Like I say, I got well over a thousand Bible studies. A lot of them are an hour long or longer. A lot of them are. I've been doing this for, I don't know, well over 10 years. 
Playlists, people, playlists. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman, Israel, clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a, head a crown of twelve stars. And in this aspect, the stars are not angels, but rather, um, if you read Joseph's dream in Genesis, he his father interprets the woman, the sun, and the moon, and the uh, head a crown of twelve stars, which is basically Jacob, Israel, his wife, and the twelve stars are the twelve tribes of Israel. And then, um, this next verse can refer to, some people say Mary, some say it was uh, Eve. Maybe it's representative of both. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars, the angels, the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. Remember, they were cast to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Did Cain kill Abel? Yes. Did... Uh, Herod try to kill Christ in Bethlehem? Yes. But I think now it's definitely talking about Mary. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Now, people, here is, this is future right here. Genesis, I'm sorry, Revelation 12, 6. And the woman, Israel, the church, fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. See, during the tribulation, the woman, the church, Israel, will have to flee into the wilderness. Verse 7, and this is past. And there was war in heaven. War in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon... And the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. The dragon didn't prevail. Neither was her place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Cast out of heaven. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Ah, oh, that's what the dragon and serpent are. Yeah, the Satan and the devil. What do you think Eve was... When Eve was talking to the serpent in the garden in Genesis chapter 3... You think she was talking to a snake? Hey, Eve. How you doing, Eve? Well, not exactly. No. She was talking to probably one of the most beautiful angels of God's creation. A shining angel. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. They were cast out. Let's go back to Daniel. Uh, let's go back to verse 9. Daniel 8, 9. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Is this talking about Satan, or is this talking about somebody that was behind Satan? That's uh, a good question. And I'm not 100% sure, but um, uh, some will tell you that Alexander stopped the sacrifice. 
Now, something you should know. Um, after Babylon had taken Jerusalem and Israel, uh, J Judah captive, uh, the Medes and the Persians, the, the Medes and the Persians, conquered Babylon. And they allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. You can read about that in Ezra and Nehemiah. And then after that, Alexander um, conquered Persia, which is modern-day Iran, by the way. And uh, perhaps you've seen the movie The 300 about the Spartans and Persia, King Xerxes. Well, that was along the same time period at, that all this is going on. Alexander was uh, angry at Persia for their destruction of um, Athens. So he, uh, he conquered Persia. Lord let him. All right, so. Verse 11. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down, and an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. And I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation, the abomination of desolation, that's what they're talking about here, and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, and then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And it came to pass, when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning, then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Now, Gabriel is one of the top angels, along with Michael, and Satan, the devil, Lucifer, used to be. So, I think Satan was actually the um, musical, um, the leader of the musical part of heaven. I think so. Giving praise and glory to the Lord. So, but that's another study I did. So, so Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood. When he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for the time of the end shall be the vision. And by the way, Daniel was a prince of the royal house of Judah. He was related to King David, I think. And you know why? They, uh, Daniel never had any kids because they made him a eunuch. That's why. And you know what? He never complained from what I understand. Verse 18. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee to know what shall be in the last end, the last end of the indignation of for at the time appointed, the end shall be. People, let me tell you something. And I'm going to go into it some more. The um, you-know-whos <coughs> are going to build a temple in a complete denial of what Christ did on the cross. That is going to be an abomination of desolation. That, that is a total, complete denial of what Christ did on the cross. So, Behold, I will make thee, thee to know what shall be in the last end of the indignation, for at the time appointed the end shall be. Now, sometimes, people, um, the Bible and the Lord will do a partial fulfillment of a prophecy, 
And then later, much later, much later, will be an ultimate fulfillment of the prophecy. Sometimes there's a shadow and then the real deal. All right, so now um, Daniel's going to be given the explanation by Gabriel of the vision he just had. Verse 20. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. Um, Persia conquered Babylon and allowed the Judah to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild it and rebuild the temple. So, yeah. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia, the king of Greece, Alexander of Macedonia. Macedonia, uh, some people will tell you Macedonia is not Greece. I mean, come on, people. Macedonia has a border with Greece. They speak Greek. You look at a Macedonian, you look at a Greek, guess what? They look the same. They speak the same language. I mean, come on. You know, they're deceivers. Or they're deceived. They just don't know what they're talking about. Or they're liars. I don't know. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king, Alexander. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, Alexander's four generals, four kingdoms should stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Now, I believe this is talking about the Antichrist. There might have been one in the days of the past, but I think this is going to be ultimately fulfilled in the future. But, you know, this is just my opinion, right? And through his policy also, he shall cause craft, craft, witchcraft, craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Who is the prince of princes and the king of kings? Uh, I'll give you three guesses. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told is true, wherefore shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. Many days. The end times. And I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days. Afterward, I rose up and did the king's business. And I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. All right, let's go back to Matthew 24. Verse 15, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now it is possible that the Greeks and or Romans um, did the abomination because only the high priest was allowed into the holy of holies. But I believe that was probably a partial fulfillment. But in the end times, it'll be the Antichrist, the man of sin, who um, will ultimately fulfill this. All right, Matthew 24, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, this happened in 70 A.D., See, the Romans surrounded Jerusalem. And then they, um, from what I understand, they only had a, a, a small force. But then they pulled back because they were awaiting reinforcements. And then when the reinforcements arrived, they surrounded Jerusalem again. Well, the Christians that believe God's word when they saw Jerusalem surrounded, 
when the Romans pulled back, they left. They the Christians fled to the mountains. And the you know who's that didn't believe Christ's words, well, when the Roman reinforcements arrived, several legions, uh, they went into the city, burned it, burned the temple, and slaughtered a lot of people. I mean, slaughtered a lot of people. So, those that didn't believe the Lord. All right, so, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Uh, when you see the man of sin standing in the holy place in the temple of God, uh, people, it's time to flee to the mountains, period. As soon as you hear that the Antichrist uh, is in the temple proclaiming himself that he is God, Don't go to your house and grab all your stuff and then leave. No. Whatever you're doing, you just flee. Go to the mountains. Revelation 12. Um, the, the woman has to go into the wilderness. Let's take a look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 real quick. Verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by le letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you. Isn't that what Christ said? Don't be deceived. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Have we fallen away? Has... Europe and the United States and all the other nations fallen away from Christ? Absolutely. Let me tell you something, people. You wouldn't... Uh, the things they tolerate today, a hundred years ago, they would have been... The, the churches would have been ex having people executed a hundred years ago for what they're doing today. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the man of sin. Paul, uh, or is it John? I think it's John calls him the Antichrist. But uh, John also calls him the beast. The beast and the false prophet. So, basically, in a nutshell, anybody that denies that Jesus is the Christ is Antichrist. And the Bible says there are many Antichrists. So, there has to come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. What does perdition mean? It means to fall. Just like Satan fell from heaven. Satan was a son of perdition. Verse 4. This man of sin, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, there's people that will tell you that this happened in 70 AD when the Romans destroyed the temple. I don't believe that. Do you think a Roman general could sit in God's temple proclaiming that he's God and that the Roman emperor has to worship this general as God? I don't think so. I think this is future. And since the temple was destroyed in 70 AD... It means it has to happen again. But this is tells you, you know, where's the temple? It will be built in Jerusalem. Well, guess what? This is why they always push you to try to believe uh, Rome, 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 Rome. 
So when this guy, the man of sin, son of perdition, proclaims that he's God in the temple of God, Matthew 24, 17, 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Don't go down to get your winter coat or a pair of extra pair of shoes. No. Verse 18. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Let me tell you what, winter time is rough when you're sleeping outside, people. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect, Behold, I have told you before. People, let me tell you something. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, comes before Jesus appears. This is why they want to make you believe this happened in 70 AD. Because if the man of sin has already been here, then what are they waiting for? the appearance of their Messiah, their Christ. See, they're going to try to trick you. They want you to believe that all this happened in 70 AD so that when the Messiah, their Messiah appears, that you'll accept him as Christ. Oh yeah, seriously. This is what they're trying to trick you to do. But if this didn't happen in 70 AD and is still yet to happen in the future... That means the man of sin has yet to come. And remember, the Bible says that there are many antichrists. Many. Jerusalem is full of them. So is New York City. And Los Angeles for that part. Hollywood, full of them. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. All right, let's go back to Revelation, I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And by the way, people, this is why they hate Paul. Paul exposes the enemy's plans. He lays it out. The Lord showed him so much. You got to remember, Paul was trained as a rabbi. Paul knows the Old Testament. Paul was a Roman citizen. He knew he I'll guarantee you he knew Latin, which was the language of Rome. Paul knew Greek. He spoke to the Greeks in their own language. And Paul was trained as a rabbi. He knew Hebrew. All right, let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, second coming, shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So if this didn't happen in the past, it's got to be the future. Verse 5. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. Uh, some people will tell you that the Holy Spirit has to be taken out of the way. I don't believe that. Without the Holy Spirit, people cannot get saved. And 
people do get saved in the end times, in the tribulation period. People get saved. So my guess is the restrainer is Michael. That's my guess. Because Michael fought with the devil before and won. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Lying wonders. Miracles, people. This guy is going to be able to do miracles. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And how do you be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But they don't want to believe in Jesus. They want to believe in Yeshua or the, this false Christ. Verse 11. For this cause, God, not Satan, God, shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They didn't want to read the Bible, so God's going to deceive them. He's going to send them a strong delusion. They're going to believe a lie. Verse 12. That they all might be damned. Wow, that's some strong language there. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Sodom and Gomorrah could tell you about having pleasure in unrighteousness, couldn't they? Oh, yeah. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks all the way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, God hath from the beginning chosen you. Wow. Isn't that election? Christians? Paul's writing to the Greeks here in Thessalonica, a city in Greece. He's telling them that they were chosen from the beginning. Does that mean that these are God's chosen people, the elect? Not if you listen to your modern demon nominational church or the Baptist church. They'll tell you the Antichrist are God's chosen people. And you wonder why I've been told to leave. The left foot of Christian disfellowship, but their Christ is... Their Christs are the Antichrist, but because we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, beloved brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Well, now you know why they hate Paul so much. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Now, in 19, uh, Revelation 19.20, we read about the doom of the, the beast and the false prophet. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles. See, the beast is going to have a prophet, false prophet, that's going to be able to perform miracles that are going to deceive people. And people are going to fall for it because God's going to send them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie because they wanted to have pleasure in unrighteousness. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. And then that worshipped his image, these boasts were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. You see, if everything happened in 70 AD, 
then the mark of the beast is all past. It's it's done. So, you know, we can't take the mark of the beast because it all happened already. Uh, yeah. So let's take a look at something else. Let's go to uh, Revelation 13. Um, where should I start? Let's start from the beginning. Verse 1. Uh, remember in Daniel, they talked about the beast that had the heads and horns? Well, here we go. Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And people, it's we're talking about the sea of humanity here. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh, the mouth of a lion. You know, Jesus is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So this one's going to try to deceive people by making him think, speaking things like he's the Lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's not. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And who's the dragon? It's Satan. Remember, we just read that in Revelation 12. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and the deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. Not Christ, but the dragon. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. This is the tribulation period, people. Forty and two months of sheer hell on earth for, for those in Christ. Verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Uh, I bet you they're going to blaspheme his name by using Yeshua. What do you think? What do you say? What do you say? Verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, the Christians, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast, whose names are or are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. I truly believe our names were written in the Lamb's book of life from the beginning of the world. What do you think? What do you say? What do you say? If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So if we're supposed to go into captivity, we're supposed to go. If they want to take you for your faith in Christ. If they want to kill you for your skin color, well, that's a different matter. Protect yourself and your family. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. Miracles, people! And he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He is performing the same miracles that Elijah did. Elijah brought fire down from the sky and devoured the enemies. And what do you want to bet this false prophet is going to claim to be Elijah? You watch. Mark my words. 
And I don't claim to be a prophet, but that's what I would do if I was the devil. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Why is this fire coming down? Because he's going to burn up those that oppose him. I believe they're not. these are not going to be people in Christ that get burned up. That's my guess. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. Oh, absolutely. You know, the beast is going to claim to be God and he's going to have this false prophet doing all these miracles and bringing fire down from the sky and burning up all his enemies. They're going to think, oh man, even Christ has come. The Moshaya. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. I wonder if the image of the beast is TV. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think? And he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads. Uh, did this happen in 70 AD? I don't think so. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 600, three score and six, 666, 666. Um, let's go back to Matthew 24, verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Matthew 24, 24, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, miracles, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Those that don't bother to read the Bible will possibly be deceived. Verse 25, Jesus says, Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he, the Messiah, the Christ, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Because, why? Because the, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, is going to become before Christ does. That's why they want you to believe it happened in 70 AD. So that when the man of sin does appear, they will say, oh, this is the Messiah. He's come. Jesus has come. Well, Yeshua has come. Don't believe it, people. How are you going to know when Christ is coming? Well, Jesus tells you right here in verse 27. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherefore, for wheresoever the carcass is, there shall the eagles be gathered together. And by the way, eagles and vultures both eat dead things. Matter of fact, there's even a e uh, vulture called an eagle vulture. Verse 29, Jesus says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Guess what? The book of Joel says the same thing. The sun's going to be darkened. And the moon shall not give her light. That's also in the book of Revelation. People, you got three witnesses here. The sun's going to be darkened and the moon's not going to give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Let's take a look at Joel chapter 2, verse 28. 
And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Oh, that's me, dreaming dreams. Old men. And let me tell you, people, I've had some dreams. They're not good. They're bad. I don't know if they're just an imagination run wild or if they're of the Lord, but some of the dreams I've had are not very nice uh, concerning the end times and what I'm going to have to go through. But the Lord never shows me what happens at the end. He just shows me up to a certain point and then wakes me up. Well, if it is the Lord. I'm not claiming I'm getting dreams from the Lord. I'm just saying I if, it, if they are. Eesh. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, for a Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, and as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Wow. All right, how about Revelation chapter 6, verse 12? And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Hmm. Let's go back to Matthew 24. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, what? Yeah, the Bible should say immediately before the pre-trib rapture. No, it doesn't say that. Immediately after the tribulation of the, those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Wow. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. The fig tree was a symbol of Judah. And guess what? The tree might have had a lot of leaves, but there's no fruit. What good is a fruit tree with no fruit? Think about that. About that little nation over in the Middle East. No fruit. Verse 33, so likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know it is near, even at the doors. And people will say, oh, it's near, it's near, so that means it's just a few years. Uh, is that what it means? Near? Are we talking about near in times of human? Or in God's time? Well, in Second Peter verse 3 and verse 8, and by the way, there's people, the people that deny Paul will also deny 2 Peter because 2 Peter acknowledges Paul as a brother in the faith. Yeah, so they, they deny 2 Peter too. 
Oh, Peter didn't write Second Peter. They'll tell you. But beloved, be not ignorant. Oh, Second Peter three eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing: that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. So when they when you hear, oh, it is near, even at the door. <laughs> uh, are we talking about in human terms or God's terms? Because in God's terms, a thousand years is like a day. Matthew 24, 33. So likewise ye, when you see all these things, know it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And they want you to think that because of that verse, that everything in Matthew 24 was fulfilled. Jesus came back, and right now this wicked, evil world is the kingdom of Christ. That's what they want you to believe. This generation shall not pass to all these things to fulfill. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. When is Christ coming back? Don't listen to Harold Camping. Harold Camping said Christ is going to come back by such and such a date. Didn't happen. Personally, the Bible says to stone to death uh, false prophets. I wish we did. Harold Camping would have been dead. That deceiver that he was. People would be very afraid to set a date. Uh, like the Watchtower, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, they've set dates at least three or four times that I know of. They set, they set a date um, when I was in high school in the 70s. Yeah, I'm old. So, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Only God the Father knows the day and the hour that Christ will return. But as the days of Noah were, that's the Greek rendering of Noah, by the way, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And the preacher of rapture crowd will tell you that the one taken is taken in the preacher of rapture and the other left behind is going to have to suffer in the tribulation. Uh, is that what happened in the days of Noah? In the days of Noah, who was taken and who was left? Uh, in the days of Noah, the wicked were taken and drowned. And Lo Noah and his family were the ones left behind at the end of the flood. So the preacher of Rasher crowd will actually lie and tell you the opposite of what the Bible says. For as in the days that they were, were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. The wicked were taken away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. There shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered or allowed his house to be broken up. So, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at uh, a couple other things here. Now, I don't like to use fancy theological words, you know, these, you know, like 
when you go to court, the lawyer will use fancy words, oh, habeas corpus, you know, or the doctors will try to impress you using these big old fancy words, uh, a pulmonary embolism, you know, that's so they can charge you, you know, I call them $20 words so that they can charge you $20 a word, you know, but I don't do that because, uh, you know, I don't care about uh, big fancy words and I'm not trying to impress anybody with my Bible college knowledge or whatever, which taught me a bunch of garbage anyways, because that Bible college believed in the preacher of rapture. But uh, I didn't go to Bible college to learn all that stuff. I learned, I went to Bible college to learn what they taught so that I could refute it. <laughs> yeah. But there's a big fancy word that they call preterism. P-R-E-T-E-R-I-S-M. This is the belief that all prophecy of the Bible is past. So, they'll tell you that Matthew 24 was fulfilled in 70 AD when the Roman legions destroyed the temple. And Christ came back, but I don't see him anywhere. Do you? I haven't seen him. But in Acts chapter 1 and verse 11, an angel said, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? See, Christ appeared to them after the resurrection, but he was taken up into heaven. Okay? Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? See, Jesus was taken up into the clouds. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go up into heaven. So after the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the apostles and was taken into heaven. See in Matthew 24, verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Are all the tribes of the earth mourning right now? No. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Um, when did we see Jesus appearing, coming in the clouds with glory? I must have missed that event. What do you think? How about Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7? Behold he, Christ, behold he cometh with clouds and every eye, every eye shall see him. Did you see Christ coming with the clouds? Uh, me neither. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Did your eyes see Christ come? Me neither. So it has to be the future. But yet they'll tell you that, oh, it happened in the past. You see, people, they're going to try to convince you that when the false prophet and the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist, appears, that that is the second coming of Jesus. Possibly. They might also pull the trick that... Um, Christ was a false apostle, or not a, a false messiah, not apostle, messiah. And that the man of sin is the real one. He's the real deal. All I know is when you see all the TV preachers and all the rabbis proclaiming that a messiah has come, you're going to know it's the wrong one. Because when Christ comes, he's going to come in the clouds. Here's why they hate Paul. Paul exposes the false doctrines. He does a very good job. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, people, that's the gospel right there. Jesus died and rose again. 
Even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And sleep meaning the dead. All the dead in Christ are going to come with Christ when he returns. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture. No. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Read that again. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. If we are not caught up in the clouds, in the air, to meet the Lord, it's the wrong Messiah. It's the wrong Christ. If we don't fly away, it's the wrong Christ. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist, the beast, comes before Jesus. This is very important. I mean, extremely important. And, if, and, and all those people that are going to be worshiping the beast are going to want to kill us. Why, you don't believe this is the Messiah? All the rabbis believe that this is the Messiah, and they're the chosen people. Chaplain Bob, you're foolish. Yeah, I don't think so. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, yeah, I hope you learned something. And, um, all I know is, it's going to be hard, people. I honestly believe there are people living today, today who will see the man of sin appear, the son of perdition, the beast, the Antichrist. I'm not sure I'll be one of them. I'm not sure. But perhaps our children or your children will see it. I don't know. There's two Jewish groups that want to build the temple. You got the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. They have websites. Seriously, they're ready to go, man. What is the abomination of desolation? Well, in 1 Corinthians 3.17, Paul speaking. This is why they hate Paul. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Wow. In 2 Corinthians 6.16, Paul writing, And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. In John 2.21, Jesus, well, Jesus was said, Destroy this temple, and I will build it in three days. But he spake of the temple of his body. Christ's body is the temple. Oh, yeah. First Corinthians 3.16, Paul Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Oh, yeah. So for the you-know-whos to build a temple of God and to perform animal sacrifices in it, 
is a complete and total denial of what Christ did on the cross. It's Antichrist. Think about it. Absolutely Antichrist. Well, you know, in John chapter 19, verse 30, when Jesus there, well, this is the crucifixion. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. And that was it, people. It is finished. And the veil of the temple was rent in half from the top to the bottom. And now Jesus is our prophet, our high priest, and one day coming king. And for the certain group of people to build a temple and start doing animal sacrifices again is blasphemy. And there will come the man of sin who will one day have somebody performing miracles who will proclaim that he is God and sitting in the temple of God. It'll happen one day. Whether I'll see it, I don't know. All I know is I'm here to try to teach and warn as many people as, you, as I can for as long as I can. So, all right, everybody, I hope you learned something. Oh, boy, two hours. Wow. And I was wanting to make this a short thing. Yeah, some people say I talk too much. Oh, well, what can I tell you? All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.